hard? How you, how you feeling? Feel good. Feel real good. Uh, you know, it was one of those things that the guys kind of went through a tumultuous uh, travel plan, and I was on the uh, the inverted end of that, which was stuck at home. So while the guys were trying to get at home, I was trying to get the hell out of the house. Um, but besides that, feel really good. Got some quality time with the family. Got to recoup and, um, you know, really itching to get back out there and, and play some football. What was the reaction when you first heard of uh, getting the Pro Bowl now? Well, I thought they had misspelled Matt Milano's name on, on the piece of paper. Uh, I'm still under the impression that they did. Uh, you know, it was one of those things that it was a great honor, a privilege. Um, it's something I don't take lightly. I appreciate my peers and anyone else who voted me on. Do I think this year was the year that I should have gotten it? Probably not, but um, it was regardless very cool. Uh, it's one of those things that I have guys around me that make me look a lot better than I am. Uh, I have a quarterback that makes me look a lot better than I am. and um, So uh, it, it's one of those things that's kind of hard to comprehend, but uh, we're very happy and the family's elated. Yeah, I mean, it was, uh, yeah, I, right when it happened, you knew that you, I was concussed. And uh, the nice thing was I understood the process, the program, understood that all the people I had talked to, the the experiences I had gone through the past. Um, you know, at first it was a little emotional, but you kind of get out of that, and then you get into the protocol, and you, and you get into the everyday deal. You start feeling better. You understand that it's just one of those things. It's, it's part of my story and my football story. Uh, feeling healthy, they're not going to put me out there unless I am. I uh, did everything I had to do, and we're back out there, and I had a lot of fun out there today and um, really enjoyed the day. I mean, it was something I'd been doing. Uh, it's something that I continue to do through training camp, and, um, you know, as, as, the, as the year progressed, we had gotten less and less contact, and when we wore pads, I always wear it. And, um, you know, now you're off fresh off protocol, you kind of got to gotta wear it. So um, I just wanted to, my head to look as big as possible out there. Mitch, you mentioned the emotion of it. Um, how hard is it to just dismiss that side of it, understanding your history, and, and then again, pushing through that? Yeah, I, it, you know, it's part, of the, it's part of the process. You know, you, your emotions are heightened when, when something like this happens. Um, you know, it's also frustrating that it's part of your story. But that's part of life, you know. Everyone's got something they got to deal with, and, and I'd had two good years of mitigating everything I could, and this was one of those things that was just unavoidable. We handled it the right way. They were very precautious with me. I was very honest with them. Uh, you know, I had some you know conversations with people that I cared about, and, and we just marched on. Felt very comfortable. Felt very uh, fortunate to be where I'm at, and felt very happy to be back out there and get to continue to compete with the guys. You mentioned How much of your years? You mentioned the two years some ways to kind of go in the back of your head is something that maybe is left behind a little bit or is that something that's always you're thinking about? Uh, I wouldn't say you're always thinking about it um, because when you go out there, you want to fly around with not reckless abandonment, but you want, when you're out there, there's only one way to play football. And if it's in the back of your mind, then you're putting yourself in a dis, dis, you know, disadvantage. Um, you know, when I, when I signed my extension, uh, my wife and I, we had some frank conversations. We understood that it, this was something that could pop up again. It did, and, and, we, and we just – we kind of dealt with it, and um, you know she was such a trooper. The whole family was cool about it, and you know I feel very good and, and happy to be back out here. What's the coach like, McDermott during the process help you cope with such an injury? Uh, yeah, you know, I think for him he was he was just dealing with uh, you know we got a game plan coming up against a good Chicago team, and um, for me I was mostly working with Nate and my coach, and but the conversations we had with Coach McDermott were always you know it was. It was never anything besides just getting healthy and we'll see you back out there when you're ready. And, uh, and that's how it kind of worked out. What's it like to be somebody who's at the peak of their profession and have to sit at home and watch while everybody else is with all you? Sure. Um, yeah, that's a good question. You know, injuries in this, in this profession are, uh, you know, it's a 100% injury rate. Uh, some of those are gonna put you in the back seat you know, it's it's tough when there's a hats and t-shirts day, especially to see that uh, the guys celebrating stuff. But you know, that was their moment. My moment was recovering, and uh, you know the guys were reached out. It was great, and um, you know they had a lot of fun. And 
uh, you know, I come back out here, I, I knew there was just time to just take it one day at a time, and that's what we did, and it, it was cool. Yeah, it was, I mean, my wife would give me updates every day. Um, you know, it's, it's one of those things that life is, it's uh, not to get philosophical on you guys, but, um, you know, any loss of life, tragically, it, it's, it's terrible, whether it be, you know, what, you know the, the race-related ones earlier this year in Buffalo. You know, I feel like this community has gone through so much, whether it be that, um, you know, Mother Nature's really taking a toll on us. Uh, but, you know, this is a city of brotherly love. It's resilient. I was at Tops, and someone let me use their discount card. I don't have a Tops card. You know, it was just like little things like that. No idea who I was. It's so little acts like that, um, people really helping people. But like you said, I, you know, it's just you know, people getting stuck in cars, losing power and stuff. And um, It's easy for you when you're in your house and your power isn't out and you have a generator or something to not really wrap your head around it. But, you know, there's, there's, there's some people that were really, you know, this is devastating. Um, so like you said, the heart goes out to them, and this, this community is very resilient. That being said, that doesn't make it much easier when, when you have something like that happen. How important or nice is it to have guys like Ryan and Greg and Mike, all these interior guys, that you are missing a player, Ryan or you, whoever, that everything can kind of still flow like it should? Yeah, totally. I think you can't, um, you can't understate how much it is, how nice it is to have guys, you know, veteran dudes or guys who have just been there, done that, go in, understand the game plan, put themselves in a position to kind of seamlessly transition in there. Um, I, I think guys like you said, GVR, Bates moving to center, Ike coming back in there, that was really cool to see. I, you know, I, I think you you have to commend a guy like Ike going through that adversity that he did going out there, not – blinking you know and going out there and throwing his hands around having a party and uh, it was fun to see um no i mean we we knew the trajectory was looking good uh we had gone through it and, and i had seen the secondary uh you know there's so many people you have to go see but that was a few days ago that we cleared that and you know the next final thing was kind of going through practice understand how that goes and um so the trajectory has been the right way but we also understand that how fickle this can be or you know how it's such a fluid situation at times so uh we we didn't put any specific date on it that wasn't fair for upstairs or myself to do that um but it just kind of the ebbs and flows this thing and uh, just the way it, it, it moved it worked out well yeah, absolutely. The uh, DJ Reader, uh, you know, just you played him uh, in the Houston playoff game. 2019, yeah. yeah. Just uh, kind of what uh, stands out when you see him. Special player. Uh, a big guy who has great lateral quickness, but also, um, you know, explosive and, uh, you know, as a nose tackle. Really good football player. And uh, one of those guys that can make plays late in the, in the play by just – you know, finishing using his hands very well, and, and he's just a big guy. You know, and uses his uh, size to his advantage. Uh, n nothing different there. I, I, I think it was just one of those things. You just focus on getting better going in that, and then naturally you go through your weekly progression when you get cleared, and uh, you know, treating this like a quote-unquote Wednesday. What's your perspective on the attention that's being placed on the game while you have a front row seat to mm. have been in these situations a number of times? Well, I would be lying to you if, you, if we didn't see what possible impl implications this game can play. Um, does that change anything for us, how we, how we do things around here? No, but it, it kind of heightens your senses. Um, you know, we understand that. Regardless of the implications, this is a fantastic football team we're going against on a you know seven game win streak for a reason. Play hard, play well, offense and defense. Um, they're, they're just a good football team. AFC defending champions for a reason, and uh, for us it'll just be about kind of controlling the controllables, which is a cliche, but kind of riding the emotions. That there's going to be ebbs and flows in the game. Plays are going to be made by both sides. It'll be a hostile environment. Um, and we'll just go out and compete the best we can and let the chips fall where they may. How have you guys learned to embrace these moments? You mentioned riding the waves, ebbs and flows. And there's, I'm sure there's some element of once you've done it enough times, you can kind of know how to uh, center that in the right direction. 
yeah, uh, you you have you definitely have some recall on things you can you can pull you can pull from your past. Uh, it still is at times you have to remind yourself and ground yourself. And uh, there'll be times in you know the days leading up or even the day of where you ground yourself and understand it is football. Um, but you can't make many mistakes against this team, especially technique wise, because they play with great effort and great technique. Thank you. Thank you.